you're like me and started Helldivers late, then you probably came in and realized there's a lot to take in. I'm gonna go over what I've learned and explain everything that I think is important for a beginner to know. Before we get into it, I'm going to be talking in terms of mouse and keyboard controls. If you're not on a mouse and keyboard, then go into your options and click controller. Then you can click change bindings and it will tell you all of your bindings for your controller. Being able to see all of these bindings is really useful, and if I talk about some controls in terms of mouse and keyboard, you can go in here and see for yourself what you need to press. If you're on mouse and keyboard, you can see all of your bindings just by doing the same thing. So go to mouse and keyboard and change bindings, and you can see all of the controls. And the first thing that I'm going to be going over is everything that goes on in your ship. If you're in a party and you want to leave without exiting the game, you can come over to here in the ship and you can leave the party. That will return you to a solo instance in your own ship. On this left side over here where it says under construction, you can open this ship management and from here you can buy stratagems with currency that you get from doing missions. A lot of these stratagems are going to be locked based on your level. Other than that, something useful to take note of is the ship modules menu here. These ship modules are going to be different buffs that affect your stratagems, and these are essentially like passive buffs on your stratagems. To unlock these, you're going to have to pay with samples, which you can pick up throughout your missions. Higher level missions give you higher level samples. Moving on to here, this is your armory. Initially, you're only going to have one thing unlocked in your primary, secondary, and grenade under weaponry. This weaponry page is where you'll actually equip your weapons, and I'll show you how to purchase the weapons in a bit. The second tab is where you equip your armor, and the armor will be purchased from the same place you purchase weapons. This is also where you can customize your character with any emotes, titles, poses, or voices, a lot of which I'll show you how to buy in a second. This is also where you put on boosters, which give buffs to your entire squad. The first one you can unlock is on page 3 of the War Bonds menu, and you can view your total stats. But the total stats are a little bugged. As you can see, it says that I have 1600 enemy kills, but it doesn't show me having anything else. It also says I don't have mission time. That's not true, but this is where your stats would go if you had them. You can't actually buy any of this at the armory. To do that, you're going to have to press the button that's on the top of your screen, which while you're in the ship is R. From here under the War Bonds menu, you can choose this option. This option is like the premium metals, but the top one is the free. And this is where you're actually going to unlock your equipment, your banners, emotes, salutes, things like that. You can click any of these things and press tab on it to see the stats. Generally how it goes is if you spend enough metals on page 1, it will unlock page 2. If you spend enough metals on page 2, you unlock page 3. And the equipment gets better as you go. Something to note in this menu also is that you can get super credits. These are one-time purchases. These are essentially like a premium currency. If you go back to the acquisition center, which is what we opened initially, you can go to Superstore, and this is where you use those super credits. Then the third page is just a store page to buy super credits. Moving on to the final important thing in the ship, you can come over here to this Galactic War table. If you open it up, this is how you actually select your missions. So right away you'll be met with all of the sectors that have been liberated. Essentially as all players do different missions, these sectors will be liberated. You need to choose one that's not yet liberated, and one that's highlighted like this. And then you can choose a planet you want to go to. Again, it has to be a non-liberated planet. And this is where you choose your actual missions. Something really important to note here is these missions that have a number out of four, that's how many people are playing this. So if I were to join this mission, there's one other person on this mission right now, and I would be joining their session. Also says join mission if there are people doing the mission. If I want to do it by myself, I have to select one that doesn't have any people. And if you want to make your lobby not joinable, the you're going to have to open your menu. Go to Options, and under Gameplay, change this matchmaking privacy to Friends Only. Friends will still be able to join, 
So if you want them to not join as well, you'll probably want to put yourself offline on Steam or PlayStation Network. As far as completely offline play, there is none at this moment. So if you have that friends only on, then you can select one of these options that has no one in it and no one will be able to join you so you can do it solo. These missions are going to be significantly more difficult solo, as from what I've seen, they're the same solo as with two, three, or four people. And on top of that, every person extra that you have adds five more extra revives. So more people definitely makes it easier. But I personally like to play alone sometimes, even if it's a lot harder. Completing missions in this table, say you complete one that's under trivial, then you can press E and that will take you over to easy. You can press Q to go back to trivial. So essentially, to unlock the next difficulty, you need to beat a mission on the current highest difficulty you have. If I beat one on easy, I can go to medium. Some of them are two steps, and you will need to beat both steps to move on to the next difficulty. Something to take note of here is at the bottom right, you can press Z to open orders and see what major order you have. So right now, it says that I need to defend against automatons. And to get more information about this, I can press escape and go all the way back to the main menu. And when I open that, it will give me more details about the major order. So it says that I need to win at least eight defend campaigns against the automatons. I believe a defend campaign is essentially just liberating planet. So this is actually a community order. And that means that as long as everyone in the community collectively liberates enough planets from automatons, then you get this reward. These rewards are really big, and sometimes they'll be something like get a certain amount of kills with weapons. Like my last one was get 60 kills with the anti-material rifle. So in those cases, when it's something like get kills with a weapon and you can do it by yourself, knowing what you need to do before you go into a mission can be really helpful so you can pursue the big reward. The other thing next to it is effects. If I open mine, it says intense heat, which means that it increases stamina drain and heat buildup in weapons is sped up. Paying attention to this can help you plan your gear for when you go into the mission. So for example, since there's increased stamina drain, I might want to pick an armor that has more stamina and speed as opposed to one with less stamina and speed because that increased stamina drain could be a huge crutch and make lower stamina armors less useful right now then i might want to choose a weapon that doesn't build up heat and instead has magazines some weapons need to reload based on overheating and some weapons have magazines and ammo so i might want to pick ones with magazines and ammo right now as well I know it's a lot to take in but we're getting really close to doing combat and missions at this point so I'm going to choose a mission now, and if it's a two-part mission, then you're going to have to choose which one you do first. At this point, it will jump your ship over to the planet, and then you need to go to the hell pod over here. And when you go into this hell pod, it's going to bring up the map, and you can choose where you want to drop. And you'll also be able to see your teammates deciding where to drop here as well, so you can use that to coordinate where you want to drop or drop with everyone collectively. Right here I can see there's an optional objective that gives me information about the primary objective and sub-objective. I'll choose to drop near the optional objective first. But if you want to go right into the main objective, then that's up to you. I usually do primary objectives and then I'll do optional objectives if they're on the way. But there are a lot of reasons to do the optional objectives too. Do you choose where you want to drop? This menu will come up and you can choose your stratagems. You can have any combination of stratagems here. So if I want to have three engineering types, then that's fine. If I want to do all airstrikes or a mixture of any of these, then that's really up to your personal preference. What I like to do is have one from supply and then two from defensive and one from offensive. So I'm going to have two turrets and then I'll have an orbital precision strike and my machine gun. Having two support weapons, I would say is not extremely useful because you can only carry one at a time and you can reload the support weapons with resupplies. If you want to change your loadout for your armor and your weapons, you can press R to go to your equipment. But once you're done with that, you can ready up and then you'll launch. Right when you land on the planet, you might be a little lost. The first thing that I would recommend doing is pressing tab and this will open your map. From here, you can use a scroll wheel to scroll in and out and you can see which direction you need to go for whatever objective you're trying to do. Something really useful about this map is that if you hold right click, then you can use this free cursor like this and you can ping an objective with left click or you can set a waypoint. This is a really great way to communicate with your squad mates where you want to go because this will show up on everyone's mini map like this. 
Right now I have this optional objective next to me, which is going to be blue, and you can have multiple of these. Then there are terminedness. These are kind of barred out areas. Both the optional objectives and destroying these terminated nests are both going to increase the amount of rewards you get. So they'll increase the currency you get for completing the mission, and they'll also increase the amount of experience you get. You can see right here, my main objective is actually grayed out right now. Certain missions have a sub-objective that you have to complete, and this will make it to where you can do your main objective. I spent an embarrassing amount of time going to the main objective before and running around trying to figure out how to do it without knowing that I actually had to go and do this sub-objective first for it to unlock the main objective because not all missions are like this. I specifically chose this one to explain that that is a possibility. If your primary is grayed out, you need to do your sub-objective first. See this question mark on my map here? This is a point of interest. And if you're close enough to the point of interest, they'll show up on your map like this. These point of interest can have different useful items, and they're also a great way to farm samples for your ship module upgrades. Running around to these point of interest, especially if they're on your way already, can be a great way to increase your mission rewards, and collecting samples between everyone is shared, I believe. So if you have some friends that you're playing with, then you can coordinate and run around to these points of interest and get samples and all of you will reap the rewards for that. So this point of interest has some ammo and then this is what a sample looks like. It's going to have this symbol next to it. That's what I was talking about to use for the ship module upgrades. There can also be things like these supply drops. And if you interact with this, then it will open it up. This can have requisition slips, super credits, medals, and even weapons. So you can get some really nice rewards if you find these. As far as enemies go, you'll run into random clusters of enemies. If you don't go very close to them, then they won't aggro on you. There's not really an advantage to killing enemies. So staying stealthy and not aggroing un unnecessary fights can make you complete the mission faster and also increase your chances of survival. I'm going to go over to this optional objective now. And again, I'm going to be avoiding unnecessary fights and staying on the outskirts of the fights to not aggro them. But of course, you have to actually kill the enemies at your objectives. Right now, I haven't gotten the attention of all these enemies at the objective. And what I would say is really smart to do before you get into any fights, or even just when you started the mission, if you don't aggro anything right away, is to order your special weapon. I'm going to order this machine gun, and to do this you can hold control, press WASD in whatever directions it says. And throw it. Watch out for any of these beacons, because they can kill you or teammates. Speaking of getting killed, the top left you see that 5 there? That's how many revives that I have left. So I'm going to get this support weapon, and since I know I'm going to be doing a lot of fighting here, I'm also going to call in a resupply. This way I can go in fully stocked up and have every advantage possible. When it comes to using your stratagems, a lot of times you're going to have to be using them in the middle of a fight, so you won't have the luxury of staring at your stratagems and knowing what buttons to press. So I'd recommend to memorize as many of the stratagems as you can, especially the primary one like resupply is down down upright. And then another really useful one is to memorize your strikes so you can call them in with minimal downtime. If you're sitting there opening up your menu and trying to read it while you have enemies chasing you, you're probably going to get killed. So I'd recommend memorizing it so you can do it fast. Ray know that resupply is down down upright because I have that in muscle memory, I can really quickly call it in. And doing this for all your favorite stratagems is really helpful. Now that I have all my supplies, I still have my advantage of stealth. And what I'm going to do with that advantage is I'm going to call in a strike on whatever I think is a good point to kill a lot of enemies. I'll call an orbital strike in, and then I'll throw it on them before they've noticed me. Firing orbital strike. At this point, they'll start chasing me. That one wasn't very well placed, but having the enemies all clustered and knowing where they're going to go initially can be used to your advantage for those. Any objective that you're trying to do is 
almost always going to have a terminal. If it doesn't right away, you're probably going to have to summon a terminal using a specific stratagem that it will tell you about. If you don't know where to go, look for a terminal within your objective. Interact with this. Usually it starts by telling you directions to input. So when you interact with this, then you just do the directions it says, just like calling in a stratagem. And a lot of the times this is going to aggro enemies. These terminals have a lot of different mini games that you can do. And if I get aggros while I'm trying to do this, then I'm going to need to run off of it and save myself. You don't want to use the terminal while you're getting attacked. And here's a good example of enemies. When it comes to enemies in general, it's going to either be the abdomen or the head. That's a weak point. So this one has a head weak point. And then this one actually deflects bullets if I shoot at its head. And it has an abdomen weak point. Most enemies follow this design. When we're talking about shooting things. Something that I didn't realize is that the circle that follows your reticle is actually where your bullets go. So the middle of your reticle is not where your bullets go. Something to make your shots more accurate is that while you're holding down right click to aim, you can click in middle mouse if the weapon has a scope, and you can know exactly where your bullets are going to go. This does come with a disadvantage of decreased mobility though, but this is also the only way that you can aim with certain weapons like the anti-material rifle or other scoped weapons. Because if you just press right click, then you notice there is no cursor or anything to tell you where you're aiming. The barrel of the gun points pretty much where you're aiming, but it's very hard to tell where you're going to shoot. So holding down right click and then pressing in the middle mouse button is going to turn you into scope mode. This is one of those things that when I started it was not intuitive to me and I was going around with the anti-material rifle and just kind of aiming like this and trying to use it. It took me a little while to realize that there's actually the button combination of holding right click and pressing middle mouse click to scope down a weapon. The things that are going to affect how accurate your shots are and how much this circle that is where your shots actually go bounces around are if you're firing and if you're moving while you're firing. You can also press ALT to lay down, and going prone will make you more accurate. You see it bounces a lot less while I'm aiming and shooting. Now that I cleared those, I'm going to go back to the minigame. So just mess with A and D until you see a high number, and then you're going to do W and S. You just want it to be 100. And if you keep it on that, then you complete it. So we used all of that ammo and stuff. We'll still have our supplies where we dropped it initially. We can go over to it. They'll just be on the ground where your little tower that has the supplies was. And these will replace all of our grenades and our magazines. Let's go up to our main objective now. And if I want to, to help me get to this main objective, I can set a waypoint. North. And using this map to avoid terminidness can be really helpful too. You can see in the top left I actually died a couple of times. I was trying to demonstrate something about healing, but I'll just explain it. Your healing actually is worth more than 100% of your health. It's just to heal over a certain amount of time where you're rapidly regenerating health. So if you heal while you're being attacked, you're generally invincible for a certain amount of seconds. If you are getting attacked and staggered, you won't be able to actually heal. And you can still die from burst damage that one-shots you. And with what I was saying earlier about activating terminals and the enemies attacking immediately, you can plan for this, and you can actually set down a sentry before you even activate the terminal. Be careful because your sentries will shoot you as well, so don't get in the line of fire of them. And sentries have limited ammo, so they go away after a certain amount of time. Basically, you have to do everything the terminal says while also surviving. Pretty much all missions follow this same thing unless they're like a defend where you have to kill a certain amount of enemies. Sometimes the terminal will tell you to do things that aren't out of the terminal. So right now it says manually realign the satellite tower. I can see the satellite tower over there. I just need to make my way to that. And once you completed whatever objective it shows, you can go back to the terminal and fulfill it. Once you finish your main objective, you need to go to wherever the extraction point is. 
top of being able to mark your extraction point, you'll be able to see a huge blue beacon going up into the sky where you need to go for extraction. If you extract, you just interact with the terminal at the beacon and do whatever directional inputs it says. And then a timer will come up. Generally, a lot of enemies are going to attack you during this. This can be a really good time to put up sentries and have something like an orbital strike ready. Also, you can blow up your sentries with orbital strikes, so try not to throw your orbital strikes at a sentry. For the extraction, you just need to survive until the countdown is done. When the countdown is done, a pelican will land. So you want to look up in the sky to see where it's landing and make sure you're not under it because it will kill you. Try to get towards the back of wherever it's landing because this back hatch will open up. If you're swarmed with enemies, then you can run in to save yourself. And that's the end of the mission. Once your mission is done, it will tally your credits and experience. This is based on your optional objective completions, how many people successfully extracted, and how many terminated nests you destroyed. On top of this, the amount of time you have left will also increase your bonus. All this combined determines your star rating. Since I went really slow, I didn't get a very good star rating. But as far as I know, star rating actually doesn't matter and doesn't affect anything. Beyond this, your experience and your currency that you get are going to be multiplied based on the difficulty that you are on. So since this was on medium, it gives a 25% increase to my experience and my currency that I gained. After this, you're awarded a certain amount of medals based on the mission you chose, which is usually reliant on the difficulty and what stage of the mission you're on. Then it tallies how many samples you got. Once this is done, you get returned to your ship, where you can spend your newly acquired medals and samples, and queue up for your next mission. Hoping this video will help out whoever watched it a lot, because I was pretty lost when I started this game, and if I understood all the things that I went over in this video starting out, then it would have made the whole process a lot easier.